Hey everybody, I'm Joey and today we're gonna grill this pork tenderloin. So good, so follow me and let's turn up the tasty. <laughs> today we're cooking pork tenderloin, which we featured on our channel a couple of different ways, in the oven, on the stove, but today we're cooking this on the grill. First things first, I wanna thank our friends at Porter Road for sending this to us. This meat is pasture with no added hormones or antibiotics. They sent us uh, quite a few delicious cuts of meat, lamb shoulder, strip steaks, which are dry aged, a dry aged tri-tip, which I'm really looking forward to doing. So thanks guys, we've included a link in the description below if you wanna check them out for yourself. Now, the first thing you need to do is get it out of the packaging. It's just not gonna taste very good if you try to cook this inside the packaging. This cut of meat is often searched for as a pork loin, but guess what? They're totally different. This pork tenderloin is, is much smaller and extremely tender. We did another video on that if you're curious about the differences between pork loin and pork tenderloin. So the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and dry this off with some paper towels to make it easier to handle so we can remove this right here. This is the silver skin. It can be tough, a little chewy, so we wanna go ahead and remove that prior to cooking. And this one actually looks like it's been pre-trimmed. There's really not a lot on there at all. I mean, they did a great job with this. Also too, this pork tenderloin is very lean. If you're a bodybuilder and you eat a lot of chicken breasts, this could be an excellent alternative for you. I actually think that this pork tenderloin has more flavor than your average chicken breast. Up, but they both have something very important in common. This pork tenderloin, like the chicken breast, it's a blank canvas for whatever you wanna create. A lot of times you'll see these sold in the store, vac sealed and pre-marinated. I gotta be honest though, I really don't like the pre-marinated ones. They're kind of like too salty. Salt. So when I do marinate, I prefer to do that myself. We have an excellent marinated chimichurri sauce on our channel that you can use. Today what we're going to do is not marinate it. Why? Because this guy is terrible at meal planning. Look, you don't have to marinate this for it to be delicious. That's just the way God made it. What we're going to do is we're going to apply some oil. And when I grill it, I, I like to get that oil on there to help uh, build in some additional char. Today we're using some, I call it liquid gold. It is Wagyu beef tallow that we rendered ourselves from Wagyu fat. And we included a video on how you can do that at home. Look, if you don't have any of this liquid gold sitting in your refrigerator, you really should go check it out. It's a game changer, but you can use most any type of oil, extra virgin olive oil or other vegetable oils if you're into that kind of thing. But the first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and coat this with some of that Wagyu beef tallow. Next, what we have right here is our fiery redhead rub. Look, you can use any rub you want to, but this is a simple rub that we created using common ingredients. We show you how to do it in another video. The thing I like about this is there's no sugar in here. I really don't like a lot of sugar in my rubs because it can cause burning over a high heat. So this has no sugar and it has a little bit of a kick, hence the name. And don't be shy with it. It has a little bit of crushed red peps in there, some uh, chipotle, some chili powder. Now that it's fully seasoned, it's time to get this on the grill. Follow me. All right, we got this pit going nice and hot. As you can see, we have our custom grill grate on top. That promotes even heat distribution and reduces flare up. Just wanna take a moment to thank my friends at Into the AM for sending me this shirt. No bad days. It truly are no bad days while we're out here cooking the delicious meats. So now that this is nice and hot, I'm gonna drop the pork on. We're gonna let that cook until it reaches an internal temperature of about 140 to 145 degrees. We're gonna let this cook about 30 to 45 seconds per side. If you don't have grill grates and you have a ripping hot fire, you really don't wanna put the meat directly over that. It will cause it to burn. Start out on indirect heat. Do an almost reverse sear and then sear at the very end. All right, so we've seared all four sides. It's at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this away from the direct heat. 
All right, that's the nice thing about these grill grates. Now that we're, we don't need it over the high heat, what we really need now is some of that indirect heat. So we're just gonna go ahead and move it over there. All right, so I just wanna recap what we did on that grill. We seared all four sides for one minute, and then we moved it over to the indirect heat where we allowed it to rise up to its finishing temperature, and that took about seven to 10 minutes after the sear. Now, my favorite part, let's cut it open, see how it looks, and more importantly, taste. Let's go ahead and get this cut into medallions. I like to cut them about a quarter inch thick and slightly on the bias. Man, this smells absolutely tremendous. It has an incredible crust to it. We got some nice char, and because we didn't have any sugar in our rub, we're not gonna be left with anything that's super bitter. Now, as you'll see, we'll pick up this piece right here in the middle. It still has a little bit of pink in it. Look, this is in Granny's pork tenderloin when she used to take this to 165 degrees and it would come out tasting like chalk. Sorry, Granny, I love you. Just didn't love the pork tenderloin. When you finish this at 140, 145 degrees, it's gonna come up in temperature a little bit. This is still very safe to eat. Not only is it safe to eat, it's delicious to eat. One of my favorite parts is right down here at the very end. It's one of my favorite bites of the whole thing. So soft, so tender. A lot of times when it runs to the tail, it gets a little thinner, gets a little bit more well done. But this, This is a great bite. We're getting some of that heat from the fiery redhead rub. Look, I've said it before, high quality outcome begins with a high quality input. And that's just how we began with this high quality cut of meat provided to us from Porter Road. It's super simple to cook, beginning to end in about 10 to 12 minutes. Easy way to turn up the tasty for you and your guests right at home. How do you like to make your pork tenderloin? Let us know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.